Hi, today I want to show you how you can create a tiny MCE content editor in your WIST and Webflow project that actually updates the variable data as you can see right in here in this variable as I type it is updating the data in the variable so that I can use the data that is inside this tiny MCE for my own processing. I can send this to an AI. I can upload this to my database. I can send this to every um, REST API I could think of. And this is the wonderful thing because if you use tiny MCE, you want to access the content in there, especially with the formatting that you can apply. For example, if I change this to an heading one, you see this will update to an H1. Or if I uh, change the font size in here, it will update that with inline styling for the updated font size, just like that. And I'm going to show you how to set this up that you have all, you can integrate all those wonderful features also separately. And you even have autocorrect, capitalization, um, and you can formatting, you can make this italic and all of that. You can edit that, even export this, so for example, as a PDF, just like that. Isn't that amazing? And you have all those features, and I'm going to show you how to add this wonderful, rich text editor inside of your platform using WIST. And it's super simple, so let's start with the Webflow part. So we have our tiny MCE, um, which is just a custom element, and we set this as a tag for a text area. And then we're just going to add the ID of tiny and we're going to add a style of border zero, just to make sure that we don't have any issues um, or any formatting issues since we're going to use the custom element in Webflow. Now I have around this something called loader holder, which we're going to apply my WIST skeleton of 200, just to have like a wonderful skeleton fade in animation using the custom attribute. And we have the skeleton code, which I made a whole video about. So I'll, I'll put that in the um, description down below as well so that you can uh, check that out. But this will be the skeleton animation. And then we have the tiny MCE script tag in here to initiate their library. And we have some uh, uh, fade in animations to make everything a little bit smoother. But that is basically it. And let's just publish this Webflow setup so that we can continue in WIST. So in WIST right now, we have just two actions. One is to initiate the tiny MCE and one is to set content into the tiny MCE. Because if I reload that, you see that we're going to start with some content. And I think I played around with it in Webflow for some reason. So yeah. Um, you don't want to have skeleton loader on there. That is another thing. You can also add the skeleton loader as a CSS, but in this example, we in this template, we have both options. You can add it as a CSS or you can add it as an HTML using the attribute, but to keep it no code wise, we just have the, um, we just have the attribute applied on there um, so that you don't have to add any custom HTML embeds. And as you can see, we have the skeleton loading animation here, and then we're going to initiate the tiny MCE, just like that. Wonderful. And you see that this content is being loaded in here. So we have one action that will initiate the tiny MCE. Now, for example, if I were to delete that action, just for now, you will see that I just have a blank text area where I can type in, just like that. So what we need to do is over the text area, we need to initiate or we need to render tiny MCE's interface so that this text area actually turns into this wonderful and powerful editor. And this is where we're going to use their SDK. So very simple. We're going to create an action. Let's just call this tiny MCE. And we're going to have this as an event based action. And we're simply going to do page finishes loading. We're going to run a function. And here's where it gets fun. We're going to do tinymce.init. We're going to initiate that. And we're going to run the function that will contain the object. It's a long function. We're going to run a function that will contain the tiny MCE object. So probably like here. And what this basically does, or it's, it's a bunch of objects. This is the whole tiny object. 
we are going to go to the selector. The selector will be the element in which you're going to render the tiny MCE in. In this case, we're going to look for the ID. So we have this attribute in here, ID tiny. And in the selector, we have this attribute with the ID equals tiny. So this is what is going to show the code that we want to render tiny in this element because it relates to this attribute. Now, if I'm going to go on plugins, we just set the plugins in here and you can update that. You can reference to their documentation and see what you want to add in there. And then in the toolbar, we can add again, plugins for the toolbar, like undo, tables, all of that. And we can configure some of the comments. We have an embedded comment mode. We can add even an author name. And um, this could probably be dynamic. Like whoever is logged in, you could say Joe or Mike or Onoy is logged in. And then we have some merge text list. Um, I don't really know what that is, but that's what their documentation told me to, do, to set up. So I did that. And then we have set up function editor. So we want to do that on input. And we have two event listeners in here. Event listeners are a bit like if you go in with and you have on event, that's basically an event listener. But we're going to give you the code version in here. So we have function editor edit on input. It's like on input in Wiz, but just in here in code. On input, we're going to have our variable v.tinyInput, which is basically the variable indicating when somebody types into the tiny editor or edits something. On input, we're going to have v.tinyInput equal edit.getContent, which is the function that the SDK from tinyMCE gives us to access the content inside of the tinyMCE. How this will look in practice is just like that. I start typing. It will add that information in here. And now we have another function down here, which or another event listener, which is on change. It's doing the same thing. So what means on change is if I'm going to make this bold or a different font size, let's do this a different font size it will update this as well to reflect the different font size, just like that. This is what onChange is doing. Now, I also have some other configuration. I also have init instance callback, and then I do console log. I'm just going to edit the editor ID and to make sure that it's initialized. And I also have a tiny dot, a v dot tiny underscore status, which will then be equaled after the tiny. This function here is looking that if the tiny was successfully initialized. If it was successfully initialized, I want to set my variable in waste, which is tiny status, to finish. And I just start out those variables all just as empty. There is no content in them. If you look in here, you see like this is just an empty string. This is just, this doesn't even exist. You could also set this as a template, but we're going to do this later on. And then you have like just this returns as an initial value as loading. You see it starts as loading. We have it loading. And the moment it finished loading, it will say finished. And this is what the code in here is doing. Um, the moment it finished, we're going to have this equal finished once the tiny got successfully initialized because it has to take the script. It has to load the script. It takes some time. And we just want to have that in there so that we can base our request or the things that we do with a tiny based on if the status equals finished so that we don't have any timing issues because we don't want to add content into it before the code has started running to avoid any issues. That is what this part is doing. And then we have a trigger for the fade in. This is basically some, uh, some JavaScript. Yeah, some JavaScript that will basically make, make the tiny a little bit smoother fade in. That's basically it. Um, see, just like that, it fades a little bit in. That is what that is doing, just so that we don't have any um, ugly resizing or something like this. Now, this is basically most of the thing you need to know, but now in this example, it would be blank. Now I have a little function in here that basically adds content to the tiny MCE. And whenever I add content inside the tiny MCE, so you can see it is blank 
And if I'm going to run this function right here, I click on here, we will see that all of a sudden we have content in here, right? And we can even add styled content, HTML content. We can really go funny. Uh, you can connect this with OpenAI and have like Markdown in there or have an output HTML content and you have wonderful things people can edit. So there are really endless possibilities in here. But we always want to base this now on the status. Since when we initialize this, we have this function in there that once it got successfully rendered and everything is done, we have this status here saying tiny status equals finished. And we want to look for if the tiny status equals 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 finished, meaning the tiny is successfully initialized, it's ready to work, then we want to run the function to add content into our tiny MCE. And the way we're going to do that is very simple. We're going to write tiny MCE dot get tiny. This is the element we're going to target. And then set content. And we're just simply going to add our content in here, just like that as an HTML string. Now you can do it like this, or you can add a variable like v.template in here, and then you could go to v.template and write return and paste, or have this work dynamically from something that came from your request. And if I were to reload that, it would do exactly the same thing, but now that it just works with a dynamic content that could come from OpenAI, that could come from your database, from something the user maybe already edited weeks ago and now wants to rewatch again that comes from Xano or from a uh, Superbase or whatever, you can have that also work dynamically. So it's not limited to static and it's also not limited to variables. It can also work with something that comes from your database and then it can be edited and then just like that and then you could save that again and then next time it opens like that because it got updated in the database. So the possibilities here are really endless. What you can do with Tiny MCE, it's a great tool um, to add this functionality inside of your app to format things, especially if you have a content focused, content oriented app or a social media app or a community. It's really a wonderful tool and there are a lot of hidden things. We even have an accessibility checker. We can add images. Uh, we can even add tables, but that's not enabled right now. So it's really something great. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you're going to build with that. And also, if you have any questions about Tiny MCE, I'm always here and happy to help. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching the videos. I really appreciate that. That really, that really means a lot to me. And yeah, thank you so much for everything, for your wonderful messages, for all your support. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.